Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to another episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. This week, my guests are uh, Ali Jami and Brent Green. Um, you guys, introduce yourselves a little bit. Sure. I'm Ali Ajmi. I'm a managing partner in uh, Global Tax Services. Uh, we specialize in uh, international uh, affairs. Uh, we also do domestic work as well um, around the area. This is my partner, Brent Green. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a CPA. I've been a CPA for over 20 years. I'm, uh, one of my specialties is inbound non-resident, what we call non-resident tax in, in the U.S., uh, I've been doing it pretty much uh, most of my job for about the last eight years. And I've, um, Ali and I worked together at a former firm and then we uh, started our own firm early in 2018. So we're growing it at the po- at this point and uh, things are going well. So yep. that's where we're at right now. That's awesome. And I, full disclosure, these are my accountants and CPA team. This is who I use to set up my structure. This is who I use to do my taxes. Um, probably some other things. They set up my I-10. What other things did... Is there anything else? Am I missing stuff? <laughs> but th- these guys are the guys that can get you to do stuff, and they actually have some great advice, too, if you have uh, some ideas about that kind of that stuff. They'll be able to answer your questions and get you in the right direction. But, um, yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, again, we, do, we do bookkeeping and, and uh, financial statements right. and that sort of stuff as yep, well. On a monthly basis. Uh, right. Monthly or annual. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so what I want to do is we're first we'll talk a little bit about structure and then we're going to jump into uh, what to do for the end of the year taxes and start of the year taxes. Uh, And we'll wrap this up. So for Canadians, um, what's the kind of what's kind of because I talked to a couple different CPAs. What's this? What's the tax structure you recommend for Canadians who are buying properties in the United States? Uh, Primarily, uh, we we use LP or limited partnership generally to a whole property. First of all, you don't want a whole property in your own name, rental property or any type of business property for liability purposes. So you want to have some sort of entity that holds it that limits your liability. Unfortunately, LLC for Canadians doesn't really work unless it's covered by another structure. It can be inside another structure. Um, Because uh, what happens is if you have any income in that LLC, uh, the Canadian uh, uh, Revenue Agency, they treat that as a standalone entity. And then you're paying tax in the U.S. and you're paying tax in, in Canada. And you don't get the, the benefit of a, a credit. Normally you get as a personal, um, under your individual taxes, you would get a credit for any like U.S. taxes paid, any Canadian taxes. But they don't consider that individual taxes. So you get get stung with double taxation, but limited partnership gives you good limited liability, and it it uh, it allows you to get that that credit. Yeah. So another yeah, there's other structures. Uh, uh, if you have a little bit larger portfolio, you might want to go with a, like a Canadian corporation that owns a U.S. corporation, and what that does it shields you for state and gift tax purposes, but allows you to, um, instead of, again, when we're dealing with double taxation, we do a corporation because if you had a U.S. corporation with your property in there, you're going to pay taxes. And then you're, if you take the money out, you get taxed again on a, as a dividend. Yeah. But if you're giving a dividend to a Canadian corporation, you get, get first you get a 5% rate but you get $500,000 worth of dividends before you have to pay. It's a, a U.S. tax treaty with Canada. So it gives you, uh, it gives you a really, really uh, favorable um, for a state and gift and for uh, income taxes. So those are the two main structures. That you can get creative under those, but those are the two that we recommend depending on the size of your portfolio. This might not be the time to bring this up, but I always had this crazy idea that, like, skip the Canadian corporation. Like, would it make sense ever to have, like, a United States corp, like a C-corp, that just puts all your properties in? And then, because really, 
the tax implications don't really usually happen on the U.S. side. It's the Canadian side that's going to charge us taxes because they have the uh, amortization periods for um, uh, writing off your uh, uh, depreciation and the anyway there's a lot of things that are more favorable in the united states for taxes so you're sure. probably going to pay your taxes in the states so i'm like if i just did a c-corp and skipped the canadian side then maybe i could skip the whole canadian thing but as soon as i pulled dividends is where i would get double taxed right that's where the yeah you get yeah. taxed 15 percent. so you you know you could legitimately be your 21 percent on the corporate rate <laughs> there might be a state tax as well and then you're going to get a double whack now now if it's a situation where you're like you want to rehab some properties, you want to hold some yeah. properties, you're not really looking at it as a rental. It might be a good concept because at the point, you're not going to take any money out until you sell. Right. Yeah. So it, it could work out in your favor in that case. But Or if you're sort of like me and you're getting a, you're in the process of getting an E2 visa, a working visa. That That's may, true, too. Th that maybe at some point, if I was living in the States, you just, I'll leave all the money in the corporation and I'll start pulling dividends at some point when I'm, you know, in the States, you know, <laughs> maybe, right? <laughs> anyway. Yes. Anyway, there's, that's the thing, though. That's why you talk to these guys, because there's a diff different ways to, like, skin this cat. Like, you could, whatever your goals are, what you're trying to do, um, they can work through it. And when we're talking about this, we're always talking about C-Corps. If you are listening to podcasts and are referencing S-Corps, we can't do that. We can't do the S-Corps. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be... Every single person in the S Corp has to be American. Correct. Cool. Um, and then, so say you've set up these um, LLCs off the start because you're working with not as great of accountants as these, and they've set you up in LLCs. Maybe we'll talk about you can elect to change the, the structure of these corporations. Yes, you, yeah. could, you could do what's called a check-the-box election. You could make it a corporation in that case. Yeah. Or you can make it a partnership. Uh, if it's, there's more than one partner, you can make it a, a limited partnership mm -hmm. at that point. Um, another thing that you could do is you could, you could transfer the interest of that LLC to a partnership. Yeah. There, there's things you can do. It, but the, the, what I've read is to do it sooner than later. Don't wait until right yes. before you sell the property because <laughs> then they're going to know you're just doing this for tax purposes, which is just tax evasion. So Well, yeah, <laughs> they, 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 and they made this allow. Yeah. Right? Uh, say you set up a pro, uh, set up your uh, structure in uh, Wyoming or Delaware for uh, privacy reasons. Um, what, what do you do uh, if you want to go buy properties in Ohio or Alabama or Kansas City or Missouri or whatever, anywhere? What, what do you, what's the next step? Well, you have two choices at that point. The best choice generally is to have an entity in the state where your property is that gives you best the best legal standing uh, for liability purposes that you actually have an entity. But you can register an outside entity in a state. Sometimes it costs just as much to mm -hmm. register that outside entity as just to set one up. But... Um, you may not have, you may or may not have the same exact standing as, as uh, an actual entity that's, you know, yeah. resides in that state. Yeah. And sometimes you have to do this because of lenders. Um, like for, in my case, we set it up uh, a new one in Delaware because the lender insisted on a Delaware LLC to run it. So we, we still put that LLC underneath my LP and then we, uh, had to elect that LLC in Delaware to operate in Alabama, Missouri, and Indiana because uh, we were doing a blanket loan and putting properties together. So that's another way when you'd have to do it. And then I we had to go get permission to operate in those states, just like you were talking about. Yeah, you brought something up, uh, a really good point there, Glenn, because a lot of people, if you're going to be buying things cash, that is one thing. But if you're going to set up a portfolio and you're going to need a lender, you want to find out before you buy anything what the lender what the lender uh requires so and if it if, it, if they require something you can't do then you have to find another lender mm -hmm. or you need to find a way to make it work so i mean that that's the, the biggest decision you make uh at that point is like am i going to borrow money how do i do it and if i can't do it then i can't do the project Originally, we recorded this episode uh, before the end of the year, uh, and, and I had some microphone trouble, so we're redoing it. Full disclosure, everybody. But um, 
we were originally talking about some things like you might want to do some expenses before the end of the year um and then we're going into what to do for the to be prepped like what what what's the accountant looking for uh to have for doing your taxes and anything that to do with the end of the year and the start of the year like this time of season accounting wise yeah so i mean get all your expenses in before the new year rolls around um what we would be requiring is uh we'll send out some sort of type of a checklist with um, all your income and expenses that occur throughout the whole year pertaining to that investment from uh, management fees the property taxes um uh, repairs large rehabs uh, on the properties um travel costs that um are pertaining to your property going out to the property um spending the time out there um, meals and entertainment um majority of um rental properties are being taken care of by a management team yep. so your management company at the beginning of the next year will give you a consolidated rental statement majority of the times the rental statements don't have all your expenses so the expenses that your management team is not keeping track of make sure you're keeping track of them on a separate spreadsheet in your business bank account so we can track all your expenses yep another thing i would say is that if you have a a, a partnership that for our standpoint, of course, we, we want to make everything easy for us, right? So, yeah. <laughs> but if it's easier for us, then it's less expensive for you. Exactly. So, right. so one, of the thing, one of the things is um, if you have any loans to or from, we need the activity of any like loans back and forth to the corporation. You need to know the cash balance at the end of the year in that account, in that business account. I want to make sure that's reconciled, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Well, that, that's just an additional any additions that you had um yeah. you know maybe you had appliances or you had to replace uh, you know a door or whatever that sort of thing you need to know you need to know that stuff too yeah what i like to do for these guys is i i make a sheet and i try to summarize everything even though i know a lot of the stuff they know the answers to but it, like you said if you can make it easier so i like to put on um the dates of purchase um, then, then I put the closing cost for it and then I'll, I'll list even if it's from a different year so that they know that that's from, that's not even, even I probably will cut out the, the, the acquisition costs and stuff. But if it's a new one, I'll put that in there. Um, I break down all of it, like what the, the rent is for that property, what a typical month goes, what the actual, um, what it ran for the whole year, I'll summarize everything. Um, what else is, I should have printed my sheet off, <laughs> uh, but, uh, oh, uh, what LLC owns it because I have many LLCs and then right, right. for that LLC who are the owners on that LLC so you know if it's me and Bob and John just making up names I don't actually have a Bob and John partner then you could know that there's Bob and John that they only I'm only doing one third of this you know it's actually going back to me so try and break everything down try and summarize and you know what having these sheets I pull them out all the time throughout the year because you're signing up for loans and the, whenever people are asking for loans, they want a summary of all these things. They're going to ask you, like, oh, I also put on a lot of things that they don't need because I, it's a summary sheet for myself, too. Like, the square footage of the property, beds, baths, and then it's a full summary. And whenever I want to use go for a loan, I can pull out the property, fill in their crazy line of all the stuff they need, put in the next line. Same with insurance. You'll need to, you're going to have to keep coming up with these numbers over and over again. Instead of having to look it up every time, you got your one summary sheet for the year. Done. <laughs> Anyway. That's it, man. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, else? you definitely make our lives a lot easier with <laughs> yeah. uh, what you yeah. provide us. Yeah. So I went. I went to school to be uh, uh, my second schooling. I went to first for account uh, for computers, and then I went through for accounting. So I actually have a diploma in accounting, but I don't use it for anything. Good. So I kind of understand what's uh, what I, the troubles that they have to go through to do it. I don't send the the shoebox full of receipts or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Um, When's the first day that you guys can file the taxes? How, like, when can we get this all sent in? Yeah, it's uh, the IRS came out with the day of January 28th, where they will be accepting um, tax returns. We can get started, you yeah. know, within yeah. the next week or so. We just can't transmit anything. Can't transmit anything. 
Yeah, so I like to try and get everything done as soon as possible. I know a lot of people dilly-dally until April or whatever, but I like to get mine in as soon as I can because you can't file your Canadian taxes until you've filed your U.S. taxes first. So I like to get my stuff so they can get the response paperwork and then we can start working on the Canadian side. And it's just nice to have it all clean because for me, I'm going in and out of loans all the time and a lot of times it helps to have another a recent uh, tax year statement like they they want to see what's what you're doing like right well it, sh- it shows that you that you have your proverbial you know stuff together too yeah exactly As, you know when you go to borrow something like, i haven't done tax returns in two years and <laughs> you're not likely to get along now for u.s non-residents the federal deadline is june okay 15 however states have earlier deadlines generally so if you have a return, it, you have income in a state, every state is different. The tax returns can be due as early as March 15th. So in that case, you know, if you don't file an extension, you may have some interest in penalties because you didn't file your state returns in time. Generally, the state liability is so low that that doesn't factor in, but yeah. it can. So you generally, like when we say, what's our deadline, uh, June 15th? Well, it's really the state deadline that... Yeah. that that drives the process. So I've never filed taxes on the in the U.S. side. Like you guys do it all for me. So you have do you have to actually do like a separate return for the states as well, or yeah. each state as well yeah. as the the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. They're all a little different. A lot of times they play off the federal, and then there's certain adjustments, and there's a little little tricks and intricacies in, in certain certain states are a little more difficult than others. Right. Cool. I think we covered like the gist of what we wanted to do. Um, if people wanted to get a hold of you to use your services or I just had a quick question, what would be the best way to get a hold of you? Sure. Yeah, you could uh, log on to our website, www.gtservicescpa.com. We have our uh, info email on there. Um, drop us a line, and we'll get back to you within uh, 8 to 10 hours. Generally, yeah. Generally. <laughs> yep. Sometimes even sooner, and you know that, Glenn. <laughs> oh, yeah, and um, I should say that. If, if you're, once you're actually working with them, their response time is amazing if you're calling them or whatever. Yeah, we offer um, like a 15, 20-minute call yep. you know, for, yeah. consult- for consultation, and then after that, we'll see what happens. But yep. we, you know, we, we answer the calls uh, generally when they come in. So, right. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time, guys. I know you're uh, you're busy, and you're about to get a lot busier this time of season. It's just about right. to come up, but uh, like I said, I really appreciate it for coming on the show. Thank oh, you. of course. Thank you, Glenn. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Take care. Cool. See you, Glenn. Thanks. Take care.